Welcome to another law video. We've got some logs to listen to and some quick bits of story to catch up on. So let's get started. Zachary Rackham is under fire again from Brianna Blanco. The reporter determined to uncover his shady past and get evidence to prove he's a criminal so then he can't run for president. Now you might wonder why being a criminal would stop him from running the federation. You could argue if anything he's overqualified but as we know it's not about being a criminal, it's about being caught in public. He's responded by saying of course that she has a vendetta against him and he's tried to mock and discredit her, offering her a job as his speechwriter and trying to laugh it off. But for me it's all sounding a little bit hollow. Rackham doesn't need criminality to show he's unfit for office. The daft ideas he's come out with so far shown to be a political nincompoop all by themselves. Only criminals should pay taxes. Muppet. The final showdown between them seems to be on now though, with Blanco hiring the highly respected detective agency Wallglass to get evidence. If they can't find any, she says, then he can go for stealing the whole federation. Now I don't think this is a vendetta that she's got. I think she's genuinely worried about how corrupt, okay, how much more corrupt, the feds would be with him in charge and genuinely fears the consequences. So I guess we'll see if Wallglass get any dirt on him. I do wonder if this is a topical reference to populist leaders who say all the things they think people want to hear, but when it comes down to doing the job, they're hopeless and couldn't run a bath. A community goal just ran to bring precious metals to the Empire, which was quite literally a gold rush, and a chance to make a lot of money. So those metals, they're going to be for something really useful though, right? Something really important, yeah? No. They're going to be used to make statues of the Duval family, past and present, to be put in public places, for people to be inspired by and pigeons to crap on. Or is that pigeons to be inspired by and people to crap on? Guess we'll wait and see. But it reminds me of Asimov's Foundation and Earth, when the travellers land on an unknown planet and one of them stays on board the ship while the other one searches through the ruins of an ancient city. And the one on the ship says, you should look for monumental buildings. And the man on the ground says, well, what do you mean by monumental buildings? And the guy on the ship says, well, fashions change from time to time, but they always look large, useless and expensive. Large, useless and expensive is a pretty good description of the Empire. As with the Feds, I wonder if this is using the Empire to have a dig at certain characters who get far too much attention and should never be let near any kind of power. I'm not going to start drawing parallels to real world politics all the time, don't worry. This will never be that kind of video series, but there are certain politicians here in the UK who say things like, hey, the economy's in the toilet, lots of people are unemployed, bills are going through the roof, in inflation is spiralling out of control. So here's an idea. Why don't we raise public morale by spending even more taxpayers' money on another yacht for the king? So FDEV are British, of course, and I wonder if this is a sly dig at the out-of-touch idiots who come out with clueless drivel like this. And if it is, nice one. So, with the feds wondering if they should write in their charter, you can be a criminal as long as it's organised crime, and the Empire navel-gazing and celebrating their own importance, or is that impotence, with overpriced directions, what's happening everywhere else? The new Guardian site we looked at last time has now been abandoned by the Thargoids. After building up a presence there, they're gone. Speculation here from the in-game boffins is mostly surprised they didn't stick around and attack us, calling it unusual behaviour for them. But is it? You might remember last year that the Thargoids were advancing into various systems in the bubble and retreating before it came to a fight, and people at the time, including Denton Petraeus and Galnet and others, were wondering if they were evaluating us somehow, if they were gauging our strength in some way, doing some kind of recon operation. So that's at least one precedent for this kind of behaviour, even if it is uncharacteristic for Thargoids as a whole. So maybe this was like that. But it's a bit out of the way to draw our attention to a reconnaissance exercise. Perhaps what players have speculated about is true and they had some lead on salvation, or something to do with the Guardians and they built up all their forces in the area until they knew what they were dealing with as an entirely sensible precaution. 
and then, when the build-up of Thargoids in the middle of nowhere attracted our attention, perhaps they decided to back off before we could work out what they were up to. Or perhaps they got what they came for. I don't believe it's just a little gap filler, an incidental story that's now ended. I think there's more to come from this. After the Thursday morning maintenance, everybody got three logs in their inboxes. I know there are people who don't play much, or haven't for a while, and they watch these videos to catch up on things. So here are those logs, for anyone who hasn't heard them yet, and then we'll look at some of the takeaways from them. The information comes from a source I trust. I've combed the data for errors in their calculations. It seems frighteningly accurate. We've known about these rumors for years now. What's changed? This goes far beyond the occasional escape pod collected by Thargoid ships, Aiden. Let me make sure I'm understanding the premise. Some analyst has compared the total population of Thargoid invaded systems with the official refugee counts. Correct. Then subtracted combat casualties, intercepted transports, and people killed during port attacks. The official estimates, at least. Along with other variables, not all refugees pass through the rescue ships. Some of those don't register as safe. Others fled as soon as the Maelstrom signals were first sighted. And a dozen other points, I'm sure. But ultimately, the final totals don't quite match up. Even with a margin for error, we're looking at tens, maybe hundreds of millions of people unaccounted for. And the figure's rising each week. If they're not dead, and they didn't escape, then captivity must be the answer. I've never known the Thargoids to keep prisoners. It doesn't quite seem their style. They'd have to construct a method to house organisms of a different biochemical makeup. That would only be worthwhile if the captives were deemed important. We did the same for studying live specimens. Uh, I'm going to assume you mean the historical we, Admiral. Aegis doesn't capture Thargoids for research purposes. Just one of the many distinctions between us and Inra. We as in the human race, yes. My point is that surely the aliens have had plenty of opportunity to study us by now. If what you're saying is true, and the Thargoids are abducting millions of people, well, there's a grander plan here than research. One that we need to figure out. I uh, suppose it's too much to hope that the Thargoids will treat our people more considerately than Inra treated theirs. <sighs> Honestly, it'd be a wasted prayer to ask that much. Oh, we'll have to manage how this information is shared. Of course, it will need to reassure people that we're doing everything we can to locate the missing. Uh, just to play devil's advocate for a second, are mass abductions something we need to go public with? Yes, I think so. With numbers this high, it would be cowardly to pretend we don't know what's going on. Hmm. I'm not sure all of Aegis's finances will agree. We've been given the authority to make firm decisions for ourselves. Besides, I'd rather be in trouble for telling the truth than lying. I couldn't agree more. I'll back you up if needed, but I suggest being economical with that truth. Think about it. The Aegis announces millions have been captured alive for unknown reasons. It, it'll scare the crap out of the trillions listening. Unknown reasons? We have to find out why the Thargoids are taking so many people. I'm not looking forward to the answers. Your rivals are going to spin any press statement, too. Torben Rademacher will be on every newsfeed, telling people that Azimuth would never have allowed this to happen, without going into details, obviously. <laughs> Screw Torben. He can play politics all he likes. Scoring points in the face of a major humanitarian tragedy is just his style. But then, he did learn from the best. Oh, this is horrible. They're harvesting us, sir. So, for goodness sake, this is a private conversation. Why are you on comms? 
Sounds like it isn't just a Thor guide she listens to. Shut down your comms link until I can find someone to secure it. I said they're harvesting us as a resource. You wanted to know why the Thargoids are abducting people. I think I can help figure out the answer. Ugh. If we're going to talk, you may as well come to my office. We'll discuss this in person. No. I want to be alone. There's a lot of noise today. Okay. What type of resource are we to them? Food? Fuel? We have no evidence the Thargoids view us as edible. Any more than we do them. Not food, not fuel. Well, it's more accurate to say the Thargoid race has a purpose for us. One which is giving me some real shitty dreams. changed a few weeks ago, but it wasn't until you mentioned millions of people vanishing that the new Melody made sense here. What do you mean by Melody? The source connection to the Thargoid telepathic network doesn't include an understanding of their language. Aegis is working with her to establish a method of interpreting what she sees and hears. Describing parts of the Thargoid noise like music helps. I can pinpoint certain notes and melodies, even different instruments. Sometimes images appear. The sound is still awful, and triggers emotions which are harder to process. But focusing reduces the chaos of it all. And you say this noise is different to when the invasion started? Yes. The original buzz grew louder as the Maelstrom signals approached the bubble. It announced the invasion, drawing their fleets. When the Maelstroms arrived, I understood that the Thargoids would claim as many star systems and destroy as many ports as possible. Territory was the only goal. Now there is a different melody underneath it. An image keeps repeating what looks like tunnels and caves. Rows and rows of what I thought were eggs. Saw mentioned these eggs to me before. And it's logical to assume that the Thargoids have a method of replenishing their war casualties. But there was never any sense of compassion or protection. Maybe Thargoids are just bad parents. But now I think it's because the eggs aren't eggs. Their pods. Containers for humans. If I focus on that concept, the noise is less abrasive. That's usually a sign that I'm understanding something in the alien broadcaster. Phew. This is a lot to take in. Do you think these pods are on the Titans? Yes. Sir. And the people inside are important to the next phase of Thargoid invasion. I'm sure of it. Okay. I don't understand how that brain of yours works, kid, but the information you've given us up to now has been solid. Alba, you said earlier that Aegis is autonomous now, correct? W within reason? Why? Because I'm not interested in waiting months for approval from the superpowers. Let's go with Saw's music. Can you have your people develop a way to recover pods from a Titan if we can figure out where they're being stored? <sighs> I'll see what I can do. But even if we design something suitable, it isn't going to be an easy mission. A ship would have to fly dangerously close to a Titan. Our pilots have done incredible things so far. I learned long ago never to underestimate them. With the right tools, they'll figure out a way to get any job done. And if Saw's so right, and these things contain human captives, well, we've got a lot of work to do. When I first heard these on Thursday morning, the tinfoil went into overdrive and I thought, who leaked this and why? How did they manage to record the meeting? That would seem to suggest it was bugged, but to what end? To incriminate Aegis for withholding information and discredit them? That seems unlikely to work since they freely admit themselves they don't have all the answers. It would be just like Azimuth to do it, of course, and then claim that not only are Aegis withholding information, but working with a crackpot who hears noises in her head, conveniently forgetting that's because of them. However, in the end, there was no conspiracy, there was no espionage, there was nothing like that going on. The very next day, Friday, this Galnet article revealed that it was Shojane herself who released the logs to everyone, saying that the accusations of withholding information are false. 
Far from discrediting Aegis or making him out to be bad in some way, it's actually backed them up. And this has been accepted even by the media, with Vox Galactica saying it's rare for this kind of information to support, rather than condemn, any organisation. I quite like this because many of us have felt that Shojin A will be making some of the calls that will lead us to win the war. But we mostly thought in terms of big dramatic revelations about the Thargoids as opposed to this. Which is more like pointing Aegis in the right direction but then they still have to work out how to do the job. But it's good because things like this are the catalysts for future narratives you know. Community goals as Aegis work out how to break into the Titan. It seems likely where all those materials you get from the Titan now that you can't do anything with except sell them. That's where they may come in. And various other ways that we, as independent pilots, can get involved. Then again, it might set off another race between Aegis and Azimuth. And let's remember that Azimuth have teamed up with Hollowell Bioscience, who had a couple of mentions in Galnet already. And they usually do that because they're going to play some part in it at some point. And Hollowell Bioscience have more expertise on extraterrestrial life than anyone. Mostly about the mollusks that he find in notable stellar phenomena. And quite how they would translate to knowing much about the Thargoids, I've no idea. But it could be Hollowell who discover a way into the Titans and not Aegis. Which is good in one way, because it's layered storytelling that recognises that... Uh, Ultimate goodies and ultimate baddies is pretty lame unless you're talking about comic book characters and it's better and more interesting to have good and bad in everyone. But it also feels a little bit contrived to deliberately do that. Look at us, avoiding black and white cliches comes over as a bit tryhard to me. I don't have a problem with the idea itself but there's always a danger with this kind of thing where... Showing how clever you are at storytelling becomes more important than actually telling an entertaining story. So I do hope that's a trap that they avoid because it's a fine line between complex and too sculpted. The information from these logs is the most interesting part in terms of what it sets up for the future. If all of the human captives are inside the Titans or inside part of the Titans then that would appear to back up previous speculation that getting into the Titans somehow is the next step in the war. And not just to rescue abductees, it could help with the rest of our work as well. The systems closest to the Titans from 15 light years in are extremely tough to clear with the usual activities of combat, rescues, deliveries, tissue sampling and salvage. We would be lucky to clear more than a small handful a week inside 15 light years. As you can see from this very rough graph, the difficulty really starts to ramp up from 20 light years inwards until it hits the upper limit at 5 light years. So it plateaus there and from 0 to 5 light years it's the same difficulty. But the sheer amount of work needed to clear just one system means that nothing fancy has been needed to stop us getting any further. The difficulty inside 15 light years does that all by itself. A simple but very effective way to keep us at the mercy of the story and any breakthroughs that it gives us. Somehow, the Titans are reinforcing the systems around them. How exactly, we don't know. But it clearly involves some kind of energy and that energy follows the laws of physics as we understand them in at least one way. With the power of the Titans' influence getting weaker with distance, similar to the inverse square law, Although, in this case, the curve is actually an inverse cubic with ramps at five light year intervals. But, statistical jargon aside, it seems logical that if we start breaking into Titans to rescue human captives, then the Titans will have to divide their energy between defending themselves and still trying to reinforce the systems around them, which in turn may reduce the strength of the systems around the Titan and make them a bit easier to take back. Meanwhile, our long-term goal is to try and get rid of all controlled systems down to 15 light years and establish a perimeter, a thin red line, at the 15 light year mark. That's going to take a while and we obviously don't know what future obstacles there may be to overcome on the way, but it's something to aim at for now. It's all to play for as we wait to see who finds a way into the Titans first. Stay safe, keep your eyes peeled, and as always, thanks for watching.